Dick Smith Wizard, aka the VTech Creator Vision, released in a number of countries under a number of different names. Apparently, it uh, was actually sold in Australia with three different names with uh, slightly different physical design. This is a recent acquisition here at the ACMS, so it was a donation, and we've uh, last week we've cleaned it up and got it working. <coughs> And I think it actually looks really, really nice. This is a machine from, I believe, 982. And uh, you can see here. And we can see here running basic, it says copyright 983. I think the physical design of this machine is really beautiful. It's got an integrated tape player here, although that's actually an add on. If I off this little blanking plate with this lovely wood grain here. So you can see this would normally go on the side of the computer. You take that off, lock on your tape player, move that there. On this side, it's the same deal. We've got a cartridge port over here, but the cartridge port would normally be on the side of the main unit. This is the parallel port module which also includes a handy little power light, which you don't normally get. So that actually passes through the cartridge port here. And apparently it was even possible to get uh, an extra RAM add-on, which would go there. And you'd have this really quite enormous machine. It would be a meter long. And you can see we've got a little rubber key keyboard here. And this is a removable piece. This was an optional extra got two plugs there and the reason for that is that we would normally have two of these joystick slash keyboard units and so they actually pass through the add-on keyboard but if we didn't have the keyboard uh, rubber keyboard extra there, then we could just have these two in the same position where they'd be locked together to make your full quarter keyboard there. So the basic um, seems to be pretty standard in its capabilities. You can do the usual hello world type thing. These keys are a little less cooperative than others. What have I done? Oh, I didn't even use the print command. You're foolish. Stop this, I go control C and that has stopped. And to make it easy to learn basic, we would get the basic reference manual, which tells you about all of your things here. Looks like we've got some sound commands, so that's cool. I'll try typing that in later. We can do arrays. We've got a char command so that we can design characters. I don't think this has really bitmap graphics. And Dick Smith was nice enough to give you some extra programs here. So you've got the hangman, guess the letters, which I think is the same. Second book of programs.
caterpillar. I think this is similar to the snake game. Maybe we could caterpillar longer. We've even got two bonus books of programs. So these ones I think are not standard with the wizard, but these are in the box with it. So I'm still so having a lot of fun writing uh, basic programs back in the day. We've actually gone to the trying to get some extra books there. Of course, uh, using your computer for programming is all well and good, but we know what the kids really love is some games. So we can see here we've got Sonic Invader. Try and guess what this game is a copy of. That's right. Just old space invaders. You can get the attract mode running here. Unfortunately, let's see the start game. So I think something's wrong with these joysticks. We've got a few uh, wizard enthusiasts out there who have offered to help us with this. So with any luck we can get these joysticks up and running and then we can get some games going. Alright, next up, Mouse Puzzle. Haven't seen this one yet. Maybe a Pac-Man game? Mouse in a maze, could be. Let's see what it does. Oh! Maybe a bit more like a Puck Mania type game? I'm guessing the mouse... Oh, here we go. This mouse is running around. And then you've got to move the sliding locks. Oh. Mm, this looks quite complex, actually. Tennis anyone? Now I was expecting a pong game, but they actually go your one better. It's a proper tennis game. And this is the special Australian edition which says Dick Smith Championship on it. There's even a little shadow for the ball. It's um I have to say for its age that this is really better than I expected. Definitely put this above, say, the Atari 2600 in terms of its graphics. It's not quite at the level of things like the Commodore 64 or the Spectrum, where you've got more of a, a full screen bitmap type thing going on, but I think they are making very good use of the graphics capabilities here. Okay, Auto Chase, obviously going to be automotive in some way. It's going to work. Okay, so the car can move around. Hmm. It's quite good scrolling. Oh, look out. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say that, again, for the age, I feel like the, the, the graphics on this are actually pretty nice. The full four-way scrolling happening in the bottom part there, and then we've got a little um, status bar at the top, which gives us a mini map. Oh, look out! Here we have a very rare treat. We've got a boxed game here. This was a separate donation from a fellow called Luca who has uh, moved over from Italy and is one of the world's foremost experts on the creative vision. So I'm hoping to get him on the channel sometime. Let's have a look at Police Jump. 
Now that does look pretty familiar. We've got a big fellow up there chucking down some barrels. And this little policeman has to jump over them. It does remind me of someone, doesn't it? Alright, let's boot up police jump. Oh, he's even doing the little bit where he climbs. Here we go, Officer Dario. Jump those barrels. Oh, you missed. It's obviously very hard to clear those barrels. So yeah, all the sound and video is going through just a regular RF modulator there. But yeah, the picture is actually quite steady. Sounds working pretty well. Okay, time to really live dangerously here. We're going to try loading a tape program. So we've got battleships and Too much to hope, unless it's a uh... no. All right, I'm gonna try to fast forward and rewind. It's probably a bit of a sticky tape, it hasn't been loaded, I'm sure, in many a year. I think that we will need to do a bit of servicing on this uh, tape player before we can use it. One last thing I want to show you is these little overlays for the controllers. So these would slide in, I'm not going to try it because they feel a little bit fragile. But normally they would just go here. <coughs> not really much to it except just that the start is going to be 6 and B on the keypad. Looks like the select or fire or the We've got five buttons anyway. Yeah, just a nice little extra bit of artwork. We've got tank attack and air sea attack, which we don't actually have the cartridges for those. But yet again, I think this is just a, a really thoughtfully designed system. I think you'd be very happy if you found this under your tree, Christmas 982. I think, uh, it was you know, a really, really quality machine. And yeah, I'm glad that we've got it here. This is over here at the museum in our front room here in the Australian exhibit. And just to get you guys excited for next week, we also have the VZ200. So let's see if we can get this going too.